All right, it's been a while since we did our last video. It's been a uh, been a crazy couple of months. A lot of things going on, so uh, I'm gonna try to get back out of here. Today we're gonna be tying the Avalon crab. Great little uh, permit pattern if you're going to places like Cuba, Belize, uh, Honduras, those kind of places. So we're gonna start out with a Daiichi 2546 uh, size four. We're going to do this one today in olive. So we got a little bit of uh, Danville 140 denier uh, olive thread. We're just going to go ahead and get it started right here behind the eye and do about eight wraps back. Now let's do, let's go six. Kind of get a little closer to the eye there. So this, just doing, counting your wraps back is just going to make sure if you're doing multiples of these, that your eyes always kind of end up in the same place. So We're going to tie these today with uh, medium brass eyes. Uh, typically brass is the heaviest that I like to go on my Avalons. I don't like to use lead. Uh, the lighter I can go with Avalons, the better. Usually a large bead chain or a smaller size, medium size brass seems to be about where I want it. Most of the time when I'm fishing Avalons, I'm not fishing them on the bottom, I'm fishing them higher up in the water column for permit that are cruising around. So all we're going to do is just kind of figure eight our eyes on here, get it nice wrapped and tight. Alright, so now we're just going to take our thread and work our thread all the way back to the bend of the hook. And get it all the way back here, right to where it starts to bend and goes up the hook a little bit. And we're going to invert our fly. So now we're going to grab some large mono eyes. I like to uh, get these eyes on my uh, Avalon just to add a little something to them. And uh, yeah, just you know something a little bit that stands out to give it more of a little crabby look to it. This crab's got eyes. Well, we'll just kind of figure eight those in right here on the bend. Kind of even them out on both sides. You just tie those in with some little figure eight wraps. And then we're going to work our thread back down to where the hook straightens out. Just kind of make sure your eyes, try to get them as straight as you can. So now we're going to do our, uh, our egg sac. I'm going to use Congo hair and deep orange. You could use a lot of different things for this though. I mean, basically anything that's kind of orange or pinkish uh, that could look like a little egg sac. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take a little pinch off of this bundle. And I'm just gonna fold it in half and cut it. And then fold it in half again and cut it once more. So we got a nice little piece. All I'm going to do with this little piece is just tie it right in here on the back. Come down with one piece off the back. Get it on the other side of the eyes. Get it nice and tight. And then fold the other piece right over it. Do the same thing. Just tie it right back on there. Tight. Too tight, your eyes will move a little on you. But once, once these materials are in here, your eyes aren't going anywhere. So we don't want our egg sac to be this long. So we're gonna cut a little bit of this out, just a little bit, maybe, you know, maybe about a uh, quarter of an inch or so. And that's all you really need for your egg sac. So now we're going to take our thread and we're going to work our thread all the way back up to the eye of the hook. Get just behind the eye. And we need some eyes. Our legs, sorry. Let's find some legs. There we go. 
So we have these uh, olive with orange chip legs. And you can use uh, basically whatever legs you like. A lot of people seem to like uh, some type of orange barred leg on the back. A lot of people use rubber legs. I really don't think it matters too much. So all we're going to do is just take one leg, wrap it around our hook, and then just tie on top of the shank, coming all the way back. Try to keep that set of legs on top of the shank until you get all the way to the back of the hook here. Then you can kind of separate them a little bit. And you'll be good. Now you got your legs separated here on the back. So I like to shorten my legs up just a little bit, but I still want a good amount of that orange showing as well. Now we're going to get some, uh, some monofilament. This is Mason Hard Mono in 16 pound. We're going to cut off a little section here and we're going to take one side and we're just going to flatten it with our pliers. That way it ties in easier. It's not going to roll on us. So just kind of flatten it. And you're just looking to put that flat piece straight on the hook shank. And tie it in there. And all you want to do is make sure that your piece of hard mono stays right in line and doesn't curve when you tie it in. So if it curves, just take it back off and then you can uh, then you can retie it. It's no big deal. I like to just kind of build up a little bit of thread base because the next thing we're going to do is dub a body and the more base that I already have on here, the less dubbing I'll end up having to use. Right. So you can go with a couple different dubbings. We're going to use a uh, uh, UV ice dub uh, here today in light olive. You could also use something like uh, this EP shrimp dub if you wanted to. I like using a dub that has flash in it already, that way I don't have to add flash like you would a normal uh, Avalon crab. But this already has the, uh, the flash built into it. So we're just going to take some big chunks of this ice dub, kind of dub it onto our uh, thread here. We're just going to do big chunks at a time. We're dubbing this entire body and we want it to be fairly thick. You want to get this, uh, this dubbing in here really as tight as you can get it on there that way uh, doesn't doesn't come off at all while you're fishing it we're gonna brush it out here a little at the end too so obviously you don't want it coming off completely when you brush it out but you want it to still have a little bit of a uh, of a buggy leggy kind of look to it once you're uh, once you're done dubbing your body Just a little more here. Like I said, you can use any type of dubbing that you want. Uh, you could even use um, chenille or uh, basically anything to do the body. I just like using the dub because it's already got the flash mixed into it. I know they kind of make some chenilles with uh, flash mixed into it these days. So I'm just going to take my little loom brush here and just kind of brush some of these fibers out of here get a little bit more of a buggy kind of look to it completely optional step here but I like to do it I think it makes it look a little better so. now we're going to go ahead and we're going to get our light olive uh, rabbit strips these are going to be our claws on the fly. So 
so. All we're going to do is kind of turn the fly here on its side like you see. I'm just going to take each rabbit claw and just tie it in right here behind the eye. Then I can cut it to length if I want a longer claw. I can cut it way back here. I like my claws to be fairly short. I try to typically line my claw up right with about where my uh, my egg sac ends. I find that that makes it so it's not so long to where it's going to foul a lot on you. But yeah, you still get plenty of movement. And it's about the right length for a claw on a crab this size. So we'll go ahead and do the one here on the other side. Get it tied nice and tight in there. So those claws aren't going anywhere. Again, we'll just measure it out. Get it right to about where the uh, where that egg sac ends and cut it off. And kind of stroke those fibers back. Now you see it starts to take on a little bit more of that kind of crab profile there. So now we're just going to get a little bit more of our uh, ice dub. We're going to cover up those uh, thread wraps and cover up around the eyes. Kind of make it so that the uh, claws look like they're just coming right out of the body. Just kind of go doing some figure eighting around the uh, around the eyes there. Looks good. And we'll just work our thread all the way here to the front. So the last thing we're going to do is add our beads here to the front. So we're going to get five. These are uh, these are brass beads. You can get them from basically any craft store. They're fairly cheap. Uh, I find it much easier to go to a craft store and buy you know beads. I think this is like a 2,500 pack of beads or something that I got for I want to say like two or three dollars, as opposed to buying you know, from some fly shops where you can buy a 20 pack of beads for the same price. So we're gonna use about five beads here. And you really wanna get, you know, some type of brass or metal bead uh, as opposed to the glass beads because these are gonna help weight your fly, help kill your fly, I should say. And then they also provide a nice little rattle on the bottom too when you strip. So we added five beads here. All we're going to do is take our mono thread now. We're going to run it through the eye so that we know it's running straight. And we want, try to get this out of the way for you, we want just a little bit of a loop here on the back side. So I'm going to hold this so it kind of stays straight. And then I'm going to wrap right over the monofilament. I'm going to wrap going back, wrap going forward, and wrap going back again. So now that mono is trapped. I'm pull my monofilament back through and take my scissors and cut it off. And all we gotta do is just whip finish. So I like to do a couple of whip finishes here just to get a little bit of a head built up. Make sure uh, everything looks smooth on the head. Now we're never going to have that unravel on us. If you got a few little fibers trapped up here, you can always take your uh, your lighter, kind of hit that with your lighter, get it a little bit cleaned up. If you got a little bit of a bump in your monofilament, that lighter will help push it back as well. And we're just going to take some Loon UV Flow on our brush. We're just going to brush it right onto our thread. Let it soak in there.
and that flow will get down in those thread wraps and so when you harden it up those those threads will never ever come undone on you I like using the flow much better than I like using some of the uh, the thinning the thin cure epoxies that are on the market or any of that and obviously a thick curing would just be too much bulk for the head so this loon flow works out really really well for this so we're hitting it with our UV light just to kind of get it dry and that's it that's our uh, Avalon crab great light pattern to uh, take to places like Belize get them on permit especially those cruising permit that you'll see in places like Turnify Atoll where they might be in five or six feet of water up near the surface. This is the pattern you want to have. This is the color you want to have. I mean, they, they will absolutely destroy this pattern. So thanks for watching. If you like the uh, video, please uh, like, share, and subscribe. All the fun stuff that uh, keeps my channel going. So thanks for watching, guys. Enjoy.